welcome back to a, a seasonal webinar that we're started doing now with the artist cards. It uh, fortunately it's early enough this year, and I know that we have stock of them, so you're getting started at the right time. And mainly, what trips people up when they're printing cards are getting the image centered, getting the image sized right, and then how to do text on the inside or on the back. Those are kind of the main stumbling blocks because otherwise printing a card is just like printing any other photograph on on that paper it's it's the same paper we use um, you know in larger cut sheets we just offer it scored and ready to go for cards so today we're going to go over a few things finding the margins on your printer which is a really important piece um, prepping that file and then <clears throat> if you are not somebody that regularly uses photoshop or lightroom you can kind of do the card layout on a full size uh, document, save it, and then you can even print cards out of something like Apple's Preview or any other application that gives you control over color management once you have that document set up the way you want it. So that's um, kind of something new that we haven't covered before in these webinars. So the artist cards, the cards come in four sizes. Three of them we label as artist cards, and one we label as entrotelopes. So the artist cards are more traditional card sizes, number six, number nine. So if you've been working with a print shop or you've been working as an artist with other cards, you'll be used to those sizes. Then we have a square card or a baronial, as it's often called. And then for the entrotelopes, those come in one size which is finished, it's a five by seven card on a sheet, it's a seven by 10. And really the big difference there is some printers, and we'll get to this later on, do let you print borderless on those seven by 10 cards. Uh, and borderless is always controlled by the print driver. So the artist cards, because of the not odd size, but the, the not standard photographic print size, you cannot print those borderless, but the entrotelopes on some printers you can. And then all of these cards do come with envelopes. So once you get that box, you're all set to go to print and send out and make everybody's day. So as Paige mentioned, we do offer templates for both Lightroom and Photoshop. Those are available for download on the site. And <clears throat> it's moabpaper.com slash templates. I think Paige will put those links in the chat as well. But those are templates for both horizontal and vertical layout. And they have... Um, the some preset margins in there that then you can adjust if you need to fine tune them. And in Photoshop, we have some different layers so that you can look at where the text would go if you wanted to do the inside or the back and what the orientation would be and all those other details. So if you're just getting started with card printing, the best thing you can do first is <clears throat> take some extra paper that you have. You know, uh, photo mat works really well because it's it's a less expensive paper and cut that down to the same size as the cards that you have so that you can do some testing and you're not worried about using up half a box of cards to make sure that you get your layout right and all that sort of thing. Because with cards, you always do wanna do a little testing to make sure you get the margins right and the layout and all that sort of thing. And the other nice thing about a matte paper is you can print on both sides. So if you test it on one side, put a little X on that, flip it over, load it back in the printer and you know that that's your second try to see what's going on. Um, and then you can put a little mark on that sheet of paper as to where the fold line would be and all that sort of thing to get yourself set up. And once you're comfortable with the setup and you have your, your printer worked out, then you can switch over to the cards and you know that you're gonna get a great print every time. So the first detail when you are printing these cards is they're not a standard size, five by seven, eight by 10 letter sheet, that sort of thing. So you will need to make a custom paper size. And again, this is all covered in the instructions on our website. So if you wanna download the, the PDF of instructions, all these details are there in that. Two things to keep in mind when you're making a custom paper size. Number one, the width dimension is always the shorter side of the paper. So if you're doing an artist card, the width is gonna be the seven inch. If you're doing the square cards, the width is gonna be the, um, the five and a quarter side. The other thing you wanna do is set your margins to zero because software like Photoshop, it actually, if you click center image, it doesn't center the image from the edge of the paper. It centers the image from the, the margins, 
that it gets from the printer driver. And very often with printers, these margins on at least one side are asymmetrical. And we're gonna go into a little more detail about that. So the one thing that you'll need to find that's pretty printer specific is what the maximum printable area is by your printer. So what are the sort of the, the default margins in the printer that you can't change your maximum printable area? And the easiest way to do that is to take an image and print it all the way edge to edge on the card and your printer will just stop where it can't print anymore. We're gonna start with that as our first demo for the day. So this is the card template for the horizontal um, square artist cards that we have on the website. And this is the, this is the Photoshop template so down here in the layers template, you'll see we have a, a background. We have the outside instructions, which are showing now, which has the front panel and the back panel. And I can click the eyeball and turn those off. And then alternately, I can have the inside instructions. So if you want to put text or anything on the inside of your card. So what I did here to start is I have an image. And I'm going to use this because it has, it has good color all the way up to the edge. So all I have to do is select the entire image because size really doesn't matter here. I'm just looking for the margins. So I'm going to select all. I'm going to copy that image. I'm going to go back to my template and I'm going to paste it. And I'll go ahead and turn off the inside instructions as well. So now I have this image, which runs off the edges of the document, which is exactly what I want to do. So now I'm going to print this just the way it is. And what's going to happen is the printer is going to stop where it can no longer print. And this is going to be my key to see what are the maximum margins I can get on my printer. And if this is your first time printing an artist card, you're going to have to make a custom paper setting. So I'm going to touch on that as well. So in the standard uh, page setup, we're going to do Photoshop manages colors. I've selected the Moab artist card profile for the Canon Pro 300, which is behind me. I'm going to do relative color metric with black point compensation as my rendering intent. So under print settings, first, I'm going to tackle my paper size. So if you haven't already made a card yet, you're going to go to manage custom sizes. And you're going to make a new one. And we'll call this artist card, uh, we'll call it baronial. So it's different from the other one. Uh, the width, as we talked about, is always the short dimension. So that's five and a quarter. The height is going to be 10 and a half. And then for the margins, we want to leave it to user defined. We want to set all of these to zero because this will allow us to center the image as we desire. So that's all you have to do, width, height, and then set your margins to zero. And I'm going to click OK. And it may or may not give you a little message that says your margins are larger than the printable area, and you can just agree to that because you want to be in control. So I have my artist card size that we just selected. Quality and media. Uh, again, all these media settings are on our profile download page and also here in the end of the ICC profile name. So this is MPP for matte photo paper. I've got that right here, matte photo paper. And if you're on a Canon printer only, you're gonna have to go to advanced paper settings and check this box for cancel margin regulation. So it will print out as large as possible. So if I save that, here it says the selected paper size does not have wide margins. That's just fine. And now, as you can see, I have 10 and a half by five and a quarter, which is the full page size, and I would hit print. And once that prints, again, I have my card here with all four edges. And it's, you probably can't see it here because the, the difference is really subtle. But if I take a ruler and I measure these, I get an eighth of an inch on three sides. And then on the last side, I actually get three sixteenths of an inch. So then what I need to do is I need to set for my printer, the Pro 300, all of my guides here to 3 eighths of an inch so that my image will be centered and I know it won't get cropped off because the printer can't quite print. 
So in Photoshop, in order to do that, okay. So to reset the guides, it's in View, Guides, New Guide Layout. And this is in the 2022 version of Photoshop. So I don't want columns. What I want are margins. And my margin needs to be 3 16 as we discussed. So I need to convert that to a decimal, which is going to be 0.1875. So for ease of use, I would just round that up to 0.2 because it's really minimal. So I can put 0.2 in here. And as I do this, you can see that those lines do then come in a little bit more than the default ones in the template. So I'm going to check the box that says clear existing guides and click OK. So now I have customized this template to my printer. And you could then go ahead and save it. And I would say save it as uh, Moab Artist Card Square Horizontal and put your printer in there. So this would be the Pro 300. And that way you can refer back to this in the future. And you don't have to do that exercise every time you want to print a card. So now that you've got your margins figured out, you'll have to um, either make a change on the text here or make yourself a little note that, well, it's not 5.5. Sorry, it's not necessarily 5 and 5. You just need to fit it in these, uh, sorry, in the grid lines. So if we do 5 and a quarter minus 0.4, again, this is where your math comes in because five and a quarter is the maximum side of the card and 0.4 is the total of our two margins. So then your maximum image size for this printer with this card is gonna be 4.85 square. So going back to my cute Halloween dog, I wanna crop this. And what I'm gonna do here, and again, this is in the instructions, I'm gonna select width by height by resolution. Because when you paste in Photoshop, your file needs to be at the same pixels per inch as that template, and that is at 300 pixels an inch. So we're going to go 4.85 by 4.85 at 300 pixels an inch. So now I can crop this as I want to have it. Press enter to accept my crop. And then again, we're going to go select all and copy and go back to the artist card square template. We'll clear out of the crop. And then I can just paste it in there. And again, because I have my new margins, this image will snap to the grid line. And then I can go ahead and turn off the outside instructions as long as I don't want anything on the back. And there is our image cropped to be square and ready to go inside those default margins. So the next thing is to test and make sure that it all works. So I'm going to take a fresh card and load it in the printer. Again, just like a photo paper, you're always going to load it uh, short edge in. We're going to select print. And because I already printed this, the settings will be the same. So we have the color profile. If I go into print settings, we have the custom media size we just made, still the correct media setting. And just to double check again, because it's a Canon printer, that cancel margin regulation is selected. Save and print. So again, to find that maximum printable area, run your image all the way past the edges of your document, print it with your custom template with zero margins, and then measure those and um, you know, write them down and then adjust the guides in Photoshop. So if we want to do that in Lightroom, it's a very similar process. So with an image selected, uh, we can go and use the same one. I'm going to go to the print module. And then I've loaded the Moab card templates in here, and those instructions are on the website. So it was the square artist card horizontal. Again, as we mentioned, it's 0.2 on the margins all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and change this template. So 
So now I know that all of those margins are set. And the 5.37 is the distance from the left edge to the right side of your photograph. And now we're going to do some live math here and make sure that I can get that right as well. So it's five and a quarter for the back panel of the card. And then it's 0.2 because we want that frame to match all the way around. Plus your 0.2, which is 5.45. So we have to change this left margin to 5.45. And now we know, same as in Photoshop, that image will be properly centered on the front panel based on our printer. And the card that I just printed out of Photoshop is done and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and fold that. And thanks to a little bit of testing and a little bit of math, those margins are even all the way around. And this will be repeatable anytime you want to print a card. And you do have some questions now. All right. Um, so once you get everything set up for a particular card, how long does it take to print the cards and can they be bulk loaded? So bulk loading is going to kind of somewhat depend on your printer. Um, if you're using the regular artist cards and not the heavy, the answer is yes. There should be no reason why you can't put a stack of probably 10 or 15 in your printer. I wouldn't, again, because it's um, cotton matte paper, I wouldn't load up that sheet feeder all the way because you'll probably have some challenges. And the other thing is if you're printing a lot of cards in the hundreds, um, in the printer, in both Canon and Epson printers, where you put the paper in, in the sheet feeder, there's a little uh, rubber wheel that feeds the paper in. And after a couple hundred sheets or more of cotton paper, that wheel is going to get a little bit of paper lint on it, a little bit of coating, that sort of thing. And you can take just a, a microfiber cloth that you've gotten uh, damp and wipe down that rubber wheel and it'll get the, the kind of the paper fibers and such off and the printer will feed consistently. So if you've been printing matte paper for a while and you notice that you have maybe some feed issues now and then, go ahead and, and reach in there and clean that roller and that should make a really big difference. Will you be showing any Lightroom settings? Um, yes, I wonder if that came in before we jumped into Lightroom, but we can absolutely go through the, the rest of the print settings here and, and make another card. And then in terms of how long it takes to print the cards, it, it's usually, I think for, a, for a, a smaller square card like this, maybe 20, 30 seconds per card. So it's not that long at all. Can you confirm that I can manage the same margins, uh, margin edits slash changes on the Canon Pro 100? Yes. So all the, the custom paper size is all done kind of in the operating system. It's, you're, you're in the print driver, but those options are available no matter what printer that you have. So we could easily go in here and choose the, the Pro 100 for this and go through the same the same process. So again, in, in Lightroom here, we have the zoom to fill and rotate to fit checked so that we know that that fills the box. I adjusted the margins based on the, the 0.2 inches that we discovered with our test. And then if you're looking for text options, Lightroom is very limited in the text that you can type in the program. So if you want to use Lightroom for printing, you have a couple options. You could take text and, and make it in Photoshop or in some other program, save it as an image file, save it as a JPEG or something like that, and then do a, do a multiple image layout and put it in that way. Or other customers I've talked to, you could print the text separately out of another program. Say if you want to print text on the inside and have an image on the outside, you could print all your text, even from Word, into the card, and then flip those over and go back to Lightroom and print your images that way. So there's, there's no easy way to do it just in Lightroom, but there are some workarounds. Whereas in Photoshop, again, you can just make a text layer and put that anywhere you want it to go. So for we have now, a few more questions. Yeah. Oh, do you want to keep going? No, let's jump into it. 
Okay. Are there any special tips for using EcoTank printers with cards? I tested a print the other day on the LaSalle photo mat and I got some weird purple magenta uh, in his images. I downloaded the new driver um, for, and used the correct paper settings using the Epson EcoTank uh, 8550. Yeah, we've had good results with the 8550. The one thing you might want to make sure of um, I'm not sure if you're using Mac or Windows, but in either one in the driver, you may need to turn off any of the Epson color controls or the things like that. Because usually when you get surreal colors or really odd purples and oranges and greens, it's uh, somehow double profiling the image. So the print driver is applying the color profile for whatever paper you selected, and then your software is applying the color profile for the Moab paper. And it tends to just absolutely accentuate and saturate colors in the image. Got it. So for Lightroom, the first place to start is page setup. And per the question about the Pro 100, uh, that driver's not installed, unfortunately, on this machine yet. But it will, it will operate the same as any of these other printers. So for this one, we could say the Pro 200, because that's really similar to the Pro 100. Again, because I already made that custom media size in a different application, it's available here, any program that I go from. <clears throat> so we'll choose that artist card, Baronial. I want it to come out landscape, just like my preview here. So I'm going to hit OK. And then print settings. So we did that for the setup for the 200. I'm going to choose the 200. Again, our square artist card. And we'll go to quality and media, matte photo paper. And so here's where you might be having that challenge with the ET, uh, the 8500. If I go back, and again, this is in the Mac. If I go back to color matching, you'll see that this is set to Canon color matching. And I'm getting ahead of myself here because Lightroom is set to managed by printer. So I'm going to cancel out of this and I'm going to return over here to the Lightroom print settings. So the first thing you want to do in Lightroom is select your color profile. So instead of managed by printer, I'm going to select the artist card profile. And it's not here in the list, but I know it's installed on the machine. And you'll have to do this once when you first install a profile and then it will live in this menu. So here I have to go to other. And this shows me all of the profiles installed on my computer in alphabetical order. There's no way to search for them, unfortunately. So we have to go down to Moab artist card. And because I've been using the 200 and the 300, I'm just going to add both of those. Click OK. And now those two will be available here in the list for me going forward. So we're going to select that artist card Pro 200, relative color metric as my rendering intent. And now I can go to print settings. Again, select the same printer. So for color matching now, this should be grayed out. Now, if it's not grayed out, you're going to want to check the box for Canon color matching or Epson color matching. And then when you go to quality and media, we're going to select the matte photo paper. Down here under rendering intent, you would say, no color correction because you don't want the print driver making any color decisions. You only want your imaging software making those color decisions. So check that and see if that's what's tripping you up when you print from the EcoTank. And then again, because it's a Canon, we have to go to advanced paper settings and make sure that cancel margin regulation is set. So I'm going to hit save. It's going to tell me it doesn't have wide margins, which we can accept. Now this is all ready to go. So let's load another card. In the 200. And click print. So as I mentioned in the opening, the 7x10 sheets or the 5x7 cards are the only ones that some printers will print borderless. Um, with the Canon desktop printers, the 200 and the 300, the borderless printing is possible because they include an inkjet 
card on the borderless settings. With Epson printers, and this is in our, our previous recorded webinar, um, borderless printing is available on the SureColor P-series printers, but you have to do a little page setup trickery. So we'll start with the Canon and then we'll go on to the Epson. So here in Photoshop, I have the uh, Intratelope 7x10 horizontal template. And the first thing that I need to do is go and change my margins based on the measurements we took earlier. So I'm going to do new guide layout, margins. So it remembers from last time, point two, and then I want to clear my existing guides. So I'm going to click OK to that. And then again, as we discussed, this dimension here changes a little bit. So it'll be seven, sorry, it'll be 6.6, .6, not 6.75. Again, because that's 0.2 on the left and 0.2 on the right. And then subtract 0.4 from seven. And you get 6.6 .6 on the width and uh, 4.6 on the height. I'm going to go to my winter scene, go to the crop tool, and it was 6.6 .6 by 4.6 at 300 pixels an inch. And I'd like a little more of the left. So there's my crop. I'm going to accept my crop, select all, copy, go back to that horizontal template, paste my image in, and I have a profile mismatch, which you can just accept. And then I'll slide this down. So that would be if I wanted to print it standard. Now, if I want to print borderless, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go back to my winter scene, undo my crop. In this case, I'm going to go to seven by five, because we're going to go borderless at 300. Accept the crop, select all and copy. Turn off the crop tool, paste this in. And now I'm going to go ahead and snug it up right to the edge of the document. There. And conveniently, you can see here that the image touches that fold line arrow. So it should be exactly where we want it. So in order to print this, I need to turn off the instruction layer. And then print. And we're going to go back to the Pro 300. Again, Photoshop manages colors. Find the color profile. Go to the print settings. And so for here, I'm going to select 7 by 10 borderless. And again, this is in the Canon driver for the 200 and the 300. 7 by 10 borderless, quality and media, matte photo paper. Advanced paper settings, cancel margin regulation, and then page processing. And I'm going to turn down the borderless extension a little bit so that it doesn't bleed a whole lot of the image off the page just a bit. And click Save. And we'll have to rotate the layout here. So that matches up. Everything looks good. I'm going to load one of the Intratelopes into the Pro 300 here. And, and I know in the beginning you mentioned that this is slightly different from for the Canon and Epson printers, but is this process the same for all Canon printers? No, it's only the newest Canon desktop printers that offer the 7 by 10 borderless. They added that in the driver and the firmware for the Pro 200 and the Pro 300. For the Pro 100, Pro 10, Pro 1, the older ones, and as far as I know, still for the Pro 1000, you cannot print the 7 by 10 cards uh, borderless. And while that one's printing, if you have an Epson printer, 
what you have to do is you actually have to kind of break the rules. And despite everything that I've already told you, you have to make a custom paper size and you're going to load the paper in long edge first, which you never do unless you're trying to cheat an Epson desktop printer to print you a borderless seven by 10 card. And again, these are all in the instructions. So just for borderless, just for the seven by 10 card, you're gonna make a custom paper size that is 10 by seven. And because 10 inches is one of the Epson borderless options, then in the Epson driver, it will actually unlock sheet borderless auto expand for you. And we'll double check that in Photoshop. So again, the same Entrado up template as we just laid out ready to go. I'm gonna select print. I'm gonna choose uh, the Epson P700. So again, Photoshop manages colors. And I have the artist card profile here, print settings. So now we need to go manage custom sizes and we're gonna say, uh, Epson seven by 10 borderless card. So again, breaking the rules here, the width is gonna be 10, the height is gonna be seven, and the margins, same as the other ones, are gonna be zero. And then when I go to printer settings, I should have the option of sheet borderless auto expand. Media type, ultra premium presentation mat. And then again, I can go to advanced media control, whoops, page layout, and I can reduce that expansion. Save. And because I had to enter the page dimensions differently, I'm just gonna adjust the layout. So when you print this on that Epson printer, you're again gonna need to load that paper the wrong way. Uh, long edge first, and then it should come out with your image borderless on one side. And again, this is a nice, this is a good time to test, like I said, using your paper scraps or whatever else that you've cut to size. And you can put, you know, a little, you can draw a little arrow on the sheet and you can say, oh, well, I'm loading it. This is, you know, this is up, this is down, have it print. And then you'll know, especially when you're trying to flip for text or whatever else, which way you have to load the card in your printer with your workflow so that it comes out right side up, centered, all that sort of thing. And then here out of the Pro 300 is our borderless card and it worked out really well. It actually printed right up to that margin. So as promised, we have that really nice borderless card straight out of the Canon driver. Evan, could you um, describe the Entrada Lope 7x10? Is it scored? It is scored. So just the, the artist cards in the Entrada Lopes are identical except for the available sizes. So as we discussed, the, the artist cards are the more traditional sizes, small rectangle, large rectangle, and a square. <clears throat> the Entrada Lopes uh, in a kind of a standard Moab box are cut and scored seven by 10 sheets, which fold to the five by seven card, and they do come with envelopes. So every card, whether it's artist cards or entrotelopes, no matter what size, um, they're boxed in either 25 cards and envelopes or a hundred cards and envelopes. If you're doing a lot of commercial card work, we do offer them in quantities of a thousand and the thousand quantity is the only one that's sold cards and envelopes separately. But in the 25 and the 100, what you would find at your uh, normal camera store, those are packaged cards and envelopes. And someone asked if this paper also comes in the gloss and it does not, it only comes in the matte paper and it's the Entrada paper for both the Moab artist cards and the Entrada loops. Correct. And the reason being that there is no glossy inkjet paper currently that can be folded without cracking the coating and causing a lot of problems. If you fold, for instance, a luster paper, it will, even if you prep it properly, it will flake at the seam and the coating will start to chip off. Um, Juniper also doesn't fold very well. 
And again, with, with any of those papers, they're only coded on the one side. So then you wouldn't be able to print on the inside. So I know some folks aren't super jazzed about matte paper, but given the technology that we have now for printing at home, it's the only real option for printing cards yourself without having to go out and off outsource to a press or something else that's not uh, inkjet. So then the last piece is if you have somebody, maybe you're working with a designer or you have a friend who's willing to put together some templates for you, maybe you don't have Photoshop or that sort of thing, or you, you do have Photoshop, but you prefer to print out of something else, you can easily take this card template, save it, and then open it in another program and print from that. So here is my um, Entrotelope 7x10 card that we just created with the, the margin that I know that I can print. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG. So we're going to say Entrotelope uh, winter, winter scene. And I'm going to make sure to save it as a JPEG so it can be opened anywhere. Embed my color profile, save that. And then because I'm on the Mac, I'm going to go ahead and open preview. And Entrotelope, here's my Entrotelope winter scene. So here it is just opened in Apple's preview. So again, print. And I'm using the Canon Pro 300. Just like the other applications, I'm going to select my uh, 7x10 card. And again, because I'm in the Canon, 7x10 is available as a regular or borderless. I have the regular option here, so I'm going to choose that. And then I want to make sure this is set to 100% scale. I don't want it to zoom in or zoom out because I want to keep those margins consistent. And then for color matching, I'm going to select color sync. And then I'm going to find that Moab profile. Artist card pro 300. Quality and media. So matte photo paper, and I have to say, cancel the margin regulation, and then load a sheet in. And print. So you would only you would only need to do this if like I mentioned, you don't necessarily have the layout software. Maybe somebody else is making these card templates for you, or you prefer to print out of a program that's not Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, and our Photoshop templates also work in Elements. So if you have Elements and not Photoshop, you can use that for printing the card. So there's a lot of flexibility here. And then is there any difference between and just regular Entrada and the Entrada loops? No, it's uh, exactly the same paper. It's just cut and scored. And the other thing is it's the grain direction is correct on the paper so that when it's scored and folded, the, the fibers are going the same direction as the score. So when you're folding a sheet of paper, you want the fold to go in the same direction as the paper fibers so that you're not breaking those paper fibers as you fold the card. But in terms of um, setting it up, or I know some people like to do cards and uh, larger print editions on the same paper, then this is all the Entrada Rag Natural. The Entrada Lopes come in just the 190 weight. The artist cards are available in uh, the standard, which is the 190. And also we have artist cards heavy, which is the 300 weight Entrada if you're looking for a, a more substantial card. And here is our card printed from preview with borders. And it definitely matches in color and tone and everything else, the borderless card that we printed from Photoshop. So again, once you get that layout done, 
if it's a card you want to print more of in the future, you can go ahead and, and save it as a, as a Photoshop document. If you want to save it in Photoshop, you can save it as a JPEG and print it from any other application. It's really flexible once you get the layout worked out. And as I mentioned um, in the previous webinar, we do demo the borderless printing on the Epson printer. And we'll have this one edited and posted to YouTube, hopefully in about a week. So you can come back and refer to it. We have the instructions for installing and using the templates on the Moab site, along with those template files for Photoshop and for Lightroom. And those include both the Intradelopes, which is the one seven by 10 size, and then the three sizes of artist cards, and all of those available in both a vertical and a horizontal layout. And as always, if you run into any issues as you're printing, feel free to email um, Evan or myself, and we'll try to get those answered as you're printing. We're here to help. All right, if there's no more questions, um, is there anything else that we need to add? Well, we have one here that came in. Uh, any problems using the new operating systems from Apple, Big Sur or Monterey? Um, just as an aside, Big Sur had some color issues in its later versions, and there was never a fix made for those. So you're definitely better off printing from uh, Monterey. All these prints that we just made today are printed through Monterey. And yeah, for those, for those few feet, people who have a machine that the last version they could install was Big Sur and, you, and you're at kind of the end of the update, like I said, as far as I know, unfortunately, at this point, there's no cure for those color management issues. And, and so I, I don't have a slam dunk suggestion for the few of you who are stuck in that position. But for those of you that can update to, to Monterey, that will, that will solve, as far as I know, all the color management issues that were present in Big Sur. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have great luck showering your friends family and business contacts with all of your custom printed cards this winter. Mm -hmm.